we are going to do our worship, shall we just look down to the Lord, ask Him to talk to us this evening. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time of worship. Worship as an attitude, we can just come before you and Lord, look up to you. Thank you for who you are, what you are in each of our lives. We thank you for bringing us here in your own way, Lord. Bringing us here as a community, Lord, to worship you, to give praises to you, to thank you for what you have done in each one of our lives. And today, Lord, as we now look upon your word, we ask you that you would speak to us. Speak to us, Lord, because we need to hear your voice. We need to, Lord, hear your sweet voice so that, Lord, that we will be able to, Lord, listen to your voice and follow you. Cover me, Lord, your servant, and speak to your children this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? I want to welcome each one of you to this evening service and thank the pastor and the secretary, the treasurer at the LCC for giving me an opportunity to talk, to kind of share the word of God with you this evening. Now, a passage that is very well known, uh, that I've chosen for our meditation this evening is from Luke chapter 10. Beginning from verse 25, that is the, the gospel lesson that we learned this evening. Luke chapter 10, beginning from verse 25, all the way up to verse 37. And I think uh, you will hear that this is the story of the Good Samaritan, as you can see on, on the screen. The parable of the Good Samaritan, and it starts uh, way before the verse 30. You know, when the 30 is the fact that we start talking about the Good Samaritan. But I think we need to go a little bit before to understand the context to verse 25. If you have your Bibles with me, I would request you to kind of turn to, uh, you know, verse 25. Here you can see that there's a lawyer who comes and who has a very genuine question. A lawyer who is a Jew. And as you can know that the Jews are very well known people. You know, they know the Bible very well. The Bible I mean when during the Jesus time, it was all about the Old Testament, the, the books of Moses. So you know that like, you know, the Jews were all very well versed in the Old Testament. And here is a lawyer, you know, we call him a lawyer, and who is a Jew, who knows the book very, very well. He comes to Jesus, and like, you know, he asks Jesus, you know, Jesus, you know, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? A very valid question. A question is very, very common question, which the lawyer asks Jesus. Jesus, a teacher, he asks the teacher, you know, you know the answer, but can you tell me, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? He talks about, like, you know, uh, that he's really worried about eternal life. Of course, he knows the scripture as well. But he wants to kind of really ask this question uh, before Jesus. And uh, as you can see that Jesus, you know, he says, he responds to his question by another question. Jesus is very, very unique. And you can just see that throughout Jesus' time, Jesus always responds to the question. And Jesus, like, you know, you see here, says, what is written in the law? How do you read it? What is written in the law? You know it, right? You know, he tells the law and he tells the Jew. You know everything. You know, what is written in the law? And then, like, you know, you, you see that. Yeah, so here this, this uh, uh, you know, the lawyer who comes and asks Jesus. And here you see that the lawyer answers, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as self and as yourself. Here we see that the, the lawyer talks very clearly about the Old Testament. If you see this verse, a very profound verse, every Christian, including each one of us living in this particular age, should have a very clear, uh, what do you call it, clear significance on. You need to kind of really, this, is, this should be a, probably the, the crux of the entire Christianity lies in this verse. You know, we see 
says, love your Lord, love your Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love uh, your neighbor as yourself. Very clearly, here we can see that, like, you know, this person very clearly gives the message of the Old Testament. Message of Old Testament, which is called to love. Called to love. And we, can, you know, we see that, like, you know, every other commandment, every other commandment that we see in the entire Bible is in these two commandments. And this is definitely something that the lawyer is very learned and that he is able to kind of really tell Jesus. Jesus, yes, I think this is what the details, like, you know, according to me, what I know, I know a little bit of the Old Testament, but I think this is the answer. Jesus, you know what he says? He said to him, you have answered correctly. You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Do this and you will live. He does not say, if you know this, you will live. He clearly says, do this. Do this and you will live. He does not say that, like, you know, hey, yeah, you know everything. Since you know everything about the Bible, since you know about the practices, since you know about all the religious uh, cultures and all the practices that are written in the Old Testament, you will live. No. He didn't say that. Jesus very clearly said, do this. It's not about knowing. It's about doing. Very clearly, you know, he says, doing this, it's a very, very profound understanding that we need to have on verse 27. I wish that, like, you know, if you have your Bibles, if you have something to mark on, if this is a verse, Luke 10, chapter, chapter 10, verse 27, a very, very significant verse, which clearly defines, we are called by grace. And this verse should be part of our life, our daily life, as we go out, as we come in, as we talk to people, as we are at home. I think this is a very, very profound verse. Each and every one of us could practice. The story just goes on. We are at verse 28. Now, uh, uh, going on, we see come to verse 29. Again, like, you know, when Jesus said, do it and you will live. When, and then again, the Lord is asking, well, but, but he is uh, desiring to justify himself. You know that, like, you know, the Jews who want to kind of fight for what? For Jesus? And this, this, this goes on like also this lawyer. And like, you know, to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Because the commandment very clearly says, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And here he says, Lord, that's all okay, but who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And as you can say that, like, you know, Jesus very clearly brings in uh, a story that is where we kind of start from verse 30 onwards, we see the Good Samaritan story. So this is a precursor, precursor to the Good Samaritan story. And this is where the story starts, where Jesus replies to a story. And I know, and I know, I'm sure all of us, including the Sunday school children here sitting here, will know about the Good Samaritan story, right? Everyone knows, you know, okay, let me ask, where was this man going from and to? Any answers? Sunday school children, Sunday school adults. Okay, you have the answer there. I wanted to just see if you are. Okay, good. Jerusalem to Jericho. Okay, so this is where the man was actually traveling from. And as you can know, like, you know, if you go into the, the details of that road during the time of Jesus, it was not a very busy road or a crowded road. It was like a, a bad land and there was a simple path that people just went on. It was very, very muddy. It was not a car or a very proper road. It was like a, it was a place where everybody, you know, anybody could have, you know, uh, been beaten up, put to death. Nobody would have even known. So you can just see that, like, you know, this is something like that. You know, I, I, I couldn't get that exact picture. But the picture was very, very, you know, it was so much of rocks, so much of dust. And it is not a proper place, you know, that you can travel with. And as you can see here, Jesus tells about the story of a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among the robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. And you, like, you can just see that, you know, it's like, you know, half dead, 
you know what, man? We have, we have to go to a medical person, or even if not necessarily need to be a medical person out there, means if you are not doing it on time, you will be fully dead. Okay, half dead means if not treated, fully dead. And that was the state of this person, this guy who was traveling, the victim, who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. And as you can just see here, the, the story which clearly says, like, let me just read for you, uh, verse 31. And by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Okay? First person is a priest who goes by the path and he is able to see him and probably you know as I as you can imagine that in that place there was nobody else. The priest knew that you know if he had to make a go away, maybe there would not be anybody who would come behind him to save this person. He knew it, but still probably I don't know what state of mind he was in. He left, he moved out. And in, in the next verse we see that likewise a Levite also when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. We see here a priest and a Levite who are considered to be the most holy person the Bible talks about. Priests are those people who can enter into uh, the altar, the most holy place and offer sacrifices for God. Levites are assistants traveling to the priest and they can also come under that particular clan. They consider to be the holy people, like you know, the holy people who are who are there, and uh, you can just see that like that these people are two, two people, two holy people who do not, you know, want to help this particular person who is lying down. And then you can just see that but a Samaritan who was on the side. Oh, 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 sorry. But a Samaritan who was on a journey came upon him and when he saw him he felt compassion and he came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them and he put him on his uh, donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. To verse 24. Samaritan is like an abuse word for a Jew. Samaritans are, uh, you know, they don't even they don't even like utter the words of Adam, the Jews. So much of hatred, you know, we, uh, happens, I mean, happened between Jews and Samaritans. Way back in the second case, if you read that, you will be able to see what was the reason for this entire difference. I don't have time to go into that. But Jews, I mean, Jews and the Samaritans were, were from almost like, you know, they were worshiping the same God. They had some of the practices which are same, but they had real big difference of of uh, hatred and Jews never did want to be somewhere closer to Samaritans. So much of hatred and uh, Samaritans were the second class people, you know, and they say that nothing good comes out of a Samaritan. Nothing good can come out of a Samaritan. And how just today we have so many people who are also in that particular state. And I think, you know, there are people who look down upon such people. And you can see here that this is a Samaritan who is coming to help out the person who is being beaten up. A Samaritan who is a second class person. Where we say we see that like, no, nothing good comes from the mouth of the Samaritans. This person stops by. He not only kind of uh, you know uh, wanting to help, it, but he is acting on it. He is acting on it. The, the command that Jesus said. Love your Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. Love as greater as yourself. He did that. He loved the Jew as himself. He did that. Whether we are, you know, we belong to a particular community, whether we are belong to a particular country, whether we belong to any particular place or ethnicity, you know, I think we we need to love the Lord, and I think we need to love the neighbor. Luke 10, 27. Again, we're coming back to that. Luke 10, 27. I think we need to make sure that we love God and we love others. This person, you know, what he did, like the Bible clearly says, he put him on his donkey. Which means, he probably would have been riding on the donkey and it would have been that path. As I said, the path was not a very good road. 
You know, it would have been a very difficult road for him to just go walk by. So what he did, then the Bible says he put him on the donkey, which means he had to walk. He had to walk. He had to sacrifice for the sake of the Jew or for the sake of the victim who's been, uh, you know, beaten up there. This is not a simple story, church. This is a story where, you know, the love has been very significantly demonstrated. Loving a neighbor who has been an enemy, who has not had the same race, or who does not come from the same country, or who does not belong to the, 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 the things that we are fascinated about. Loving a person, loving a neighbor is so much important. The lawyer, we are moving on, I think. Yeah, so we just cross this. Thank you, Joshua, for moving on the slides. So, we have come to this place. But the Samaritan came here, he bandaged. Jesus changed the question of the lawyer. The lawyer initially asked the question, Who is my neighbor? Here, Jesus, through this story, tells this Jew, who is a neighbor? Who is a neighbor? And we see here that lawyer was very clearly, you know, giving this particular story for him to do and live accordingly. To do and live accordingly. Jesus again comes back to this Jew and asks this question. Hey, you heard this story of this good Samaritan? Which of these three? Do you think it proved to be a neighbor to a man who fell among the robbers? Is the response of the lawyer, you should just look at this response. The lawyer didn't want to even utter the word Samaritan. The Bible says, the priesthood came for us, the Levite came second, and the Samaritan came third. You know, that's the story. But, you know, when asked the question about, like, you know, who would be a neighbor, who proves to be a neighbor, the lawyer very clearly says, he didn't even want to say that, like, you know, yes, Samaritan, no, he didn't want to say that. He said, the one who showed him mercy, the one who showed him mercy. So, so to that extent, you were know, up, it was, it was so difficult for you to kind of uh, say the word Samaritan. Friends, it's not easy. Friends, it's not easy for us to be a Christian. You know? It's not easy for us you know, to be an easy Christian. Probably just because we are born in a Christian family, it does not mean that we are followers of Christ. It does not, just because we have a name, which is a Christian name, it does not mean that, you know, we are Christians. We are being saved by grace. We have to show the fruit of our salvation. The fruit of spirit, which clearly which clear, says love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We got to display that to others. Is our words, is our actions displaying that? Anybody, no apart from you, is a neighbor. Not just the person who stays in the same apartment or in the same community. Anybody who we meet is our neighbor. We are called to love those who are hard to love and serve their needs. Probably, are we having those questions in us? Do we have an issue about loving a person who has been very difficult with us? Probably the person who has been giving a very tough time to us and therefore we are not able to love that person. The Bible clearly says that everybody, you know, he they are your neighbors. Who is a neighbor? Very clearly we just saw that in this particular passage. If we truly love God, we need to love those and definitely to serve them who are in need. Let me ask you this question. Who would you identify yourself with in this particular story? You know, do you identify yourself as a donkey, or a Levite, or a priest, or an innkeeper, or a Samaritan, or a victim? You've heard the story and like, you know, what does it come to our mind? Like, you know, where do we identify ourselves? Today I want to kind of share with you that whoever you may think you are,
Probably you might think that you are a donkey kind of trying to help in terms of transporting that victim to the inn. Probably you are the innkeeper who is like willing to have some resources. You have some resources you want to share with the people. Probably you are a priest. You are too busy to kind of really help out that person. You are a Levite. Maybe you are too busy to help that person. Or you are a Samaritan. Who has offered to help. And let me tell you that. All of us who are victim. I think God here in a donkey and picked us up. All of us, I think, are the recipient of this love. Each of us have so many rough times that we've been through. Like the guy who was beaten up and he was like, you know, left half dead. I think I can resemble most of my things with that particular victim. I've gone through, and I think even each one of us also have been through so much of pain, so much of suffering, being like rejected, being probably, you know, having the feeling of hurt. And I think, you know, we may need somebody to help us. You know, we've been left half dead, looking for somebody to come and help us. And I think Jesus came down, God came down, and on and off he kind of carried us, probably and then like you know, picked us up and carried us, and I think first we are the recipient of God's love, we are the recipient of God's love, and I think we, we are, we are, we are more than glad, or we are more than fortunate to have a God who is willing to come down, leave his own glory for each one of us this evening. And I think it is our responsibility to kind of really accept that love. Accept that love, that genuine love, that sacrificial love that he displayed on the cross. And I think next, secondly, we are expected to also show that to others. Show that to others. Like how the Samaritan showed love to a stranger who was left half dead. Let, let, let the words like you know probably go deeper into our hearts. Pray as we kind of meditate, as I'm, 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 I'm assuming that God has been speaking to each of us. That we will, we will not be like the normal people who just love one another. Just because the other person loved us, we need to reciprocate that love. Just because the person gave us a gift, we need to give back a gift. Just because the person said hello, we need to say hello. Just because the person came and hugged us, just because that we are no. Even if the person is hating us, it is our responsibility to love them. Even if the person has been like going behind us, backstabbing us, I think we've got to love. We've got to love our neighbors as ourselves. And that's not easy, as I said, it's not easy. As a Christian, we are called for this greater purpose. Jesus always has in his standards much, much higher than the worldly standards. The worldly standards just says that only if you come into murder, it's a murder. But Jesus' standards says very, very good. Even if you have a apron about with a person, you are committing murder. So, so his standards are very higher. I think we've got to really qualify to that standard. And as we hear this message this evening, shall we just close our eyes? And just look to God and ask God to help us. Help us to uh, receive His love. Help us to be recipient of His great love. So that we can share this love with others. So that we can be channels of blessings to others. As we remain silent. As we allow God to speak to us, let us hear God speaking to us personally. We may have been priests, ignoring people's needs. We may have been Levites, just rejected people come on our way. But God gave down. He picked us up 
put us on this donkey. He saved us from death. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love that you gave us, that you showed us on the cross. But we are not worthy to receive that love, but it is your mere grace, the unmerited favor that you have shown on each one of us. Father, we just ask you that you would continue to Lord, Lord, chisel us, continue to speak to us, Lord, break us, Lord, mold us, use us, Lord, your own way, channels of blessing to us. Lord, people who we meet, there are several thousands of people who we meet on a daily basis. Help each one of them to look upon them as neighbors. Of how we can show love to them, how we can serve them. Since we are recipient of your love, help us to also show love to everyone, Lord. In spite of all the differences in terms of money or in terms of race, in terms of color. But all of that help us to go beyond that and Lord love the person. Today, Lord, as this message comes to each one of us, we surrender ourselves and we, Lord, pray that you would continue to, Lord, use us, continue to, Lord, make us as your channels of blessings. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.